Just wait very briefly for YouTube to catch up. Ah, oh, here we are. Okay. Okay, lots of comments already. I see uh, a couple of questions which I'm going to uh, get to in just a minute. The first thing I want to do this evening, I've got to, I've sort of, I think, I, I don't know how this happened. I must have moved something inadvertently, but I'm sort of looking up at the camera at the moment, which I don't usually do, however, not to worry. Um, first thing I want to do, you can see on the end or the bottom of the screen, my donate button for want of a better word um please 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 do donate and if you are in or near wales and you want to come along on friday the 13th of october um please email in at amw2024 at hotmail.com but first of all thank you to everyone who has donated so far i am really 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 grateful and i know it's tough I know it's tough. And one of the hardest things to do in all of this is to keep going. Um, it, the whole thing can be really, really unfair. <laughs> um, politics is not a meritocracy, a meritocracy based affair. It can be very difficult, but have a little bit of faith, have a little bit of faith. And, um, you know, I've been around a long time. I've been around a long time in one form or another uh, and I will be still around for a long time. I've been always been consistent, always been straightforward. So I uh, I hope uh, that you will continue to back me and thank you very much for people who have. Right. First of all, I'm going to answer this question. Um, it, it comes up quite a bit, so I'm going to answer it. Uh, it, can Richard Tice be trusted? Um, look, I don't think a great deal about Richard Tice. I'm not a person who is, I don't involve myself in constantly looking at what everyone else is doing. I think it's a negative thing to do. Um, but let me, you know, he may do well. To me, you've asked me my opinion, so I'm going to give it. To me, uh, I saw he's a politician. I saw what he did with the COVID vaccines. Am I allowed to say that now? Are we allowed to say that now? Anyway, I've said it now, so it's too late. I saw what he did with that. I mean, one day he was saying people have to have it and another day, or at least healthcare workers have to have it. Um, and then another day said, I never said that. Anyway, you know, it, it's, it, he's a politician. He's a politician. Um, there is no way in hell he would say the things that I would say, for example. Not that I'm comparing myself to him, I'm not. Um, and I'll just give you a little clue. When he's in Hartlepool, Antifa never raise an eyebrow. Antifa don't leave me alone for a minute. And again, this is not to, I'm not comparing myself to him. I wouldn't. Um, but that's a little indicator. And on top of all of that, I'm sorry to say I find him frightfully uninteresting. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. And that's the last, honestly, the last thing I'm going to say about him because he just doesn't feature in my world. He's just another politician as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Uh, when lightning strikes the sea, why don't all the fish die? I'm going to assume this is a joke. Um, I don't quite get it, but <laughs> thank you. Hi from Norway. Hello, Norway. What a beautiful country. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful country, Norway. Um, right. Let me see. Right. Let me know. No, no, let's just get on. I can't get caught up in these questions. Honestly, I do that every time we start every Wednesday, every, when we start, I get caught up in this immediately and go completely off track and forget what I'm doing. I mustn't, mustn't do that. I'll come back later. Okay. So a couple of things I want to ask you about. So let's start with a question. Let's say hypothetically, theoretically, there was a item of clothing in existence. And it was a item of clothing whose purpose was to separate clean from unclean, respectable from not respectable. And the, the ones who wore the garment were respectable, the other ones weren't. 
And millions and millions and millions of people all over the world were forced, sometimes by law, mostly just by family pressure and, and threat of violence, to wear this thing. And thousands of people were murdered every year, often brutally murdered every year. Uh, and thousands is, is it, it's definitely thousands, but I would say it's into, it's into the tens, tens of thousands. And the people who collate these figures always admit when they say thousands, they say this is probably a, about 10% of the real figure. So thousands of people every year all over the world are murdered for just saying, I don't want to wear this thing. It's cumbersome. Um, it's uncomfortable. I don't like what it stands for, the clean on clean thing. I don't want to wear it. And thousands of people, like I say, are killed every year for just for saying, I don't want to wear this. Do you think that we would revere this thing in the West and make a statue to honor it? Put up a statue in the UK to honor the very thing that I've just talked about. Well, it turns out that we would, and we have, and the world's first statue, and it's massive, by the way, is going up in, over in, in the black country to honor the hijab, spitting in the face of every, the thousands of women murdered every year for not wanting to wear it. Women are brutally treated with this thing. Um, <laughs> even in this country, they're forced to wear it. I'm going to tell you a little story. When I was with the National Secular Society, I went to a school. I used to go do talks and things on behalf of the Secular Society. And I remember going to the school. It was in Harrow. And it was a very Muslim it wasn't a Muslim school, but the, the pupil demographic in the school was, was very Muslim. And I gave a talk to this class. I'd say they're about 14, 15 years old. I gave a talk about, a talk about secularism to this class. And after the end of my talk, I'm getting into sort of a bit of banter, a bit of chat back and forward with the kids. They're great. I had a great time. Um, from, I did a lot of schools and spoke to a lot of great kids. Um, and so many of the girls were in hijabs and they sort of, you know, I didn't, I wasn't necessarily, because I was representing the national sector, I didn't necessarily want to be overly controversial, but conversations happen and you go sort of off script and you, and you talk. And at a push, they asked me in an ideal world, would girls have to wear hijabs? And I said, in an ideal world, any girl who doesn't want to wear it wouldn't be wearing it. And if families force it on them, it should be a criminal offence. Schools actually, in my view, shouldn't actually allow them. I mean, if France isn't exactly on another planet, is it? And France doesn't allow them. World, the sky hasn't fallen in on France. And it's pretty much what I said. And when I tell you girls in hijabs applauded what I said, it moved me, really moved me um, because, and I do mean applauded. Uh, even, there were a couple of, of whoop whoop in, a, in the room. Um, it, I will always remember it because it was the first time it really hit me and it hit me, hit me, really hit me in, in, in here. I, the first time I realized how many young teenage girls in the UK are forced to wear this and don't want to, because those girls did not want to wear it. They clearly didn't want to wear it. If they're, if they're applauding me and whistling, and I do mean that, it, it was remarkable. Um, if they're so excited by the idea that their school would just wouldn't allow it, that means that the parents wouldn't have any choice, but it, and yet they were wearing it as they were celebrating the idea of being able to take it off. That really hit me. Um, and I'll always remember it. But we ignore that. We have decided that the beardy old farts in the mosques and the madrasas and the Quran soaked lunatics who pretends that they represent every Muslim on this planet, 
We bow to them and ignore all the women who are killed, all the girls who don't want to wear it. We completely ignore them. And we've decided that oh, beardy old fart is actually who we ought to comply with in order to not be racist and to celebrate culture, multiculturalism and the wonderful richness of a multicultural society. To hell with the girls. To hell with all the women butchered every year for not wearing it. It's beardy old fart over here. He's who matters. So anyway, here is a picture. It's huge. Here's a picture of the first ever statue built to honor the hijab in the world. And wouldn't you know it, where, where else, where else will there be a statue built? The first ever statue in the world built in honor of the hijab. Where else but the UK? Of course. Of course. Here's a picture of it. It's absolutely massive. And what really grabs, what really gets me, gets on my, just, uh, I makes me furious. But there's a few things that make me furious about this. Some of them I've already alluded to. It's all the girls in this country imprisoned with this and, and other aspects of this awful religion. Uh, we'll see this and we'll know this. And as if they don't already feel alone in the world enough they really we really are telling every single one of them we couldn't care less about you you in fact are the problem that's what that's what we're telling that's the message we're sending outrageous um a bit of funny news that i want to share and it's made me laugh is uh <laughs> Outrage after a white woman is named winner of Zimbabwe's Miss Universe competition. <laughs> oh, you got you got you got to love it. Um, it says here this, uh, the crowning of a white woman as winner of Miss Universe Zimbabwe has been met with much derision and outrage online, with many people blasting the organisers for a decision they say is utterly flawed and wait for it, tinged with racism. Get your head around that one. So it's racist for a white woman to win a competition in a majority black country. Similarly, it's racist if a black woman doesn't win a competition in a majority white country. You see how you see how this works. Whenever racism is, whenever the word racism is used, somehow, no matter the context, no matter the situation, no matter the state, the characters involved, nothing, nothing. Always white people are on the receiving end of the punch whenever the word racism is, in, is invoked, always. So the message is very clear. There is no consistency. All of this is a target at white people, all of it. This goes on to describe some tweets that were shared on Twitter, um, obviously. Although I know it's called X now. I knew Elon Musk would ruin Twitter. I knew it. Um, I never call it X. It's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, so on Twitter, people were outraged by this. The one, one person said, um, this is not Miss Zimbabwe. This is more like Miss Rhodesia. Mugabe must be so mad. And one person said, well, the day African people stop disrespecting themselves is the day they start earning the respect they deserve. The Western standards of beauty exhibit traits of disrespect and deceitfulness. This is why they can only deem a European as a proper Zimbabwean. I'm not even sure quite what that I'm reading that. A verbatim, by the way, the Western, the Brit that cuts me, the Western standards of beauty exhibit traits of disrespect and deceitfulness. That's you, by the way. Oh, just, I don't, it's too much, too much. And something else that's too much 
is this. There is a children's book. My dog is growling out there for some reason. There is a new children's book. Now, if you want to see communist revisionism in action, look no further than this. It's called Brilliant Black British History. It's a children's book. And it'll be in schools before the end of the week, if it's not already. It says that Stonehenge was built by black people. Um, and that Britain was a black country before it was a white country. Um, I'll read you I'll read you an article. Uh, this is from the Daily Mail. It says, readers of brilliant black British history written by Nigerian-born author Atanuki are told that the Neolithic monument in Wilshire, Stonehenge, was built while Britain was a black country. The book, which is aimed at children aged seven and above, tells readers that every single British person comes from a migrant and the very first Britons were black. The introduction adds that Britain has mostly has been mostly a white country for a lot less time than it has been mostly a black country. Not very well written there, but in other words, it was a black country a lot longer than it's been a white country. The author also claims that the remains of the 10,000 year old cheddar man belonged to someone who had skin as dark as can be. Now you can see through that cheddar man thing immediately you know what this this is this is it, it, it's somewhat sums up where we are um the aim of this i don't necessarily this book this woman maybe believe believes this i i i don't know but um the aim of this and the aim of this trajectory this, that books like this are bringing us on what they're trying to tell you is that you own nothing nothing is yours so if you are a white native brit um you don't belong here this is black people own this country and you should be grateful just for the chance to live in it um it is once again an attack on white people it is to leave us vulnerable without any land or territory to call our own and i'm always amused when i hear western politicians and i saw joe biden do it just i think yesterday um speaking actually a couple of days ago at the united nations biden spoke at the un general assembly the other day in new york and he said that uh we must commit i i paraphrase but the west must commit to helping ukraine defend its territorial integrity um there is more concern among western leaders including rishi sunak joe biden the whole lot the more concern about ukraine's borders um the great concern about ukraine's borders and particularly i've heard the words territorial integrity used quite a bit now if it if ukraine's territorial integrity matters why doesn't Britons? Why doesn't France's? Why doesn't Italy's? Why doesn't you? Why white people, in other words? Why are whites the only people to which none of this stuff applies? We're not allowed an identity. We're certainly not allowed any countries. We're not allowed any territorial integrity. And humans are territorial creatures. We attach ourselves to the land upon which we live this is natural it is evolutionary it is part of our makeup um but we only why it's not allowed to have it see this for what it is and there's something else that's quite mysterious about this i'll go on with this a little bit the book says and i quote that britain was a black country Bef more than 7,000 years before white people came. And during that time, the most famous British monument was built, Stonehenge. Now, question. And this reminds me of when I think it was the Pope, I think it was the Pope, uh, saying that Europe was built by immigrants. Now, what immigrants? 
from where? Where did we actually come from? That's what I want to know. So Britain was a black country before white people came. It doesn't offer any. Came from where? I'm completely confused. What are we? We we Britain is a country of immigrants. Europe was built by immigrants. Britain was black for thousands of years until white people came. We're from where? Where did we are we from outer space? But where where are we supposed to be from? Nowhere. You literally you are being told with this rhetoric, and it has support among every politician, uh, with a, with the an honourable a few honourable exceptions in elected chambers across the Western world. None of them are speaking out against it. That's for sure. You're being told that you have. Nothing. No history, no identity, no heritage, no country. Nothing. Nothing. We're nothing and nobody. And we're the only racial group on this planet that is treated like this. I want to read you just very, very briefly. That was a main topic that I mainly want to cover tonight. But before I do, I want to read, uh, just keep in mind what I've just said. And I want to read you just a little bit. This is from 2020, July 2020, when Black Lives Matter were rioting and destroying property and, yes, killing people and uh, taking over areas of towns and destroying them with disgusting criminal behavior. Um, That's what Black Lives Matter are and that's what they did in July 2020. So the BBC, never missing an opportunity, gives a platform to this guy called Clive Mirry um, to talk about how the British Empire, of course, destroys is destroying his life. The British Empire, which ended quite a significant chunk of time ago, is still, um, he still feels the effects of the British Empire because poor him and everything that's ever gone wrong in his life is because of the British Empire. Nothing to do with him, ever. It's all the British Empire. Um, he misses the bus and it's the British Empire. It's just racism, British Empire, everything, 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 everything is to blame for everything. So anyway, he's a BBC give this guy a platform to air his grievances. The BBC, the first B, by the way, stands for British, just in case that isn't clear. Um, and they could not hate this country more. The BBC literally could not hate this country any more than it already does. It's astounding. They gave this guy a platform to talk about his, what it's like to be black and how terribly marginalized and all the rest of it, rubbish that they come out with. Anyway, I am Afro-Caribbean, born in Bolton to parents who came to the UK from Jamaica. I know my grandmother on my mum's side spent a few years in Panama as a child when her father, my great granddad, worked on the building of the Panama Canal. Beyond that, I have no clue who I am. That's because, like virtually all British West Indians, my lineage is sings back to Africa and the transatlantic slave trade. I know I'm likely to have come from somewhere in West Africa, but which country I haven't the foggiest. Does this matter to me? Yes, it does. We all want to feel rooted with a clear connection to the past. Deep roots help steady us. They give us confidence. They hold us upright. When those roots aren't there, when the branches are broken, there's a sadness and a sense that you're floating through life untethered to the ground. What have I just described? What does that book who says white Britain is actually a black country? There was a black country for years until white people came from outer space, apparently. What does that do to us? What does the fact that every corner and region and territory on this planet belongs to its people except one? 
Europe and the Western world belongs to everyone. Everyone somehow has a right to be here. And they think they have that right because the West is the rich part of the country, of the world. Well, I'll let me just let you in on a little secret. The reason the West is rich is because of the people who built it. They built it with a free market economy, not a socialist communist one, which people seem to want. The left seems to think that they can keep the luxury they live in in the West while being some sort of communist globalist state. You can't. There's a reason for the wealth of this part of the world. It is the people. It is the work ethic. It is the uh, 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 culture of trust. It is the economic system. That's why it is what it is. It's because of the people who built it. It belongs to them. Europe is the only part of the world that belongs to everyone. Everyone, everything, everyone else gets to own their territory. They get to have their roots. They get to have what this person is describing, the roots that steady them, that give confidence. Why do you think they're taking our roots away? Why do you think they're taking our history and identity and heritage away? For just that which I have read. Roots give you confidence and give you something to belong to and something to believe in and something to fight for and something to unite with your fellow countrymen and women. For. This is what they are taking away. And that's, it's not an accident. They want and are taking our countries from us. And this is part of the tactic they're using. And it's working. It's working. People genuinely think, uh, they they believe it. They think, well, well, we are a country of immigrants. A country of what? What? So what was here before then? Nothing. If we're if if Europe is a continent of immigrants, then then so is Australia. So the Aborigines must have come from somewhere as well, didn't they? Where do they come from? So how come? I, I don't get it. Because I'm not meant to. Because none of this is meant to mean anything. None of this is actually true. None of this is reality. It is an attack and an assault on white people. That's all it is. At some point, some point, I have to stand up to it. Right. Oh, here's what I wanted to talk to you. The main, main topic I wanted to talk to you about tonight. Were you aware? that Islamic blasphemy laws are now a thing in much of this country. Now, people, including me, actually, I haven't thought about Islam in a long time. Um, I no longer read about it or write about it. I've probably forgotten a lot of what I used to know. I mean, I've spent years um, talking about giving talks all over the country um, about about Islam. I knew the Quran very well. I knew the surahs. I knew I knew the life of Muhammad. I knew the festivals. I knew what the hijab was all about, and the niqab and the burqa. And I, I, I this was stuff I knew really, really well. Honestly, I've probably forgotten some of it. It's, it's not something that's on my mind anymore. Um, but I have fallen into the mistake and made the mistake it seems like many of us in unbelieving that this topic has somehow sort of gone away uh, it really 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 hasn't and and I, it's in fact in terms of numbers it's getting much worse i've always maintained that when people say not all muslims yeah i thank, thank you for that profound insight but it doesn't have to be all muslims and um, what you do what you have is the beardy old fart who gets to sit down with politicians in Westminster and make his demands. Um, and they, of course, bow down because, you know, you don't want to be racist, uh, anything but that. So they, they bow down to beardy old fart and they, um, 
the more the larger you know the people say well not every single muslim is you know i under i get that thank you i understand that the point is that the larger the muslim population the larger the demographic the more power beardy old fart and beardy old fart two and beardy old fart three and a whole row of beardy old farts the more power they have because our stupid politicians who are thick as two short planks and will swallow a brick if it's told to them by a brown skinned person. They will give, they believe that Beardy Old Fart is representative and speaks for every single Muslim in this country. They will therefore think, well, look, the, the def- demographic is huge. We've got to change the country in order to accommodate this huge demographic of people. They don't have to change because that would be racist. We have to change to accommodate them. And the bigger the population, the more change we have to make. So the more power also that Beardy Old Fart has. So what is happening in Devon, or Devon, Dover, actually probably is Devon as well. What's happening in Dover? Uh, well, we know hundreds of people are coming into the country every day and, and, and being greeted as like the heroes. Um, you know, these people are Muslims, right? They are. So the Muslim population and the Muslim demographic gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so the more the bigger the population gets, the more the rest of us are going to have to accommodate the demands of Beardy Old Fart, who, to be fair to him, actually, he going to represent Muslims, but in large, to a large extent, he does represent Islam. He's stuck in the seventh century. Um, is primitive and be, be, be filled with, I'm not talking about belief in, in something greater. I have a belief in something greater. I'm talking about ridiculous things. Um, and we will, this, this is, this guy is, is, is swamped in seventh century bronze age values. And, 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 uh, he makes those dem- he makes demands of the rest of the country based upon those values, and he gets them. But these are Islamic values, is the point. They may not be every Muslim, but they are Islamic. Um, so to be fair to him, he, while well, he he does actually represent Islam. So what's happening now? I'll tell you. I'll read it to you. Let me read you um, a little bit from this article. So in two thousand and eighteen. This is from uh, the 20th of September, so a week ago. In 2018, the All Party Parliamentary Group on British Muslims proposed the first working definition of Islamophobia in the UK. In its report, Islamophobia defined, it stated that Islamophobia is rooted in racism and is a type of racism that targets expressions of Muslimness or perceived Muslimness. Now, I know this all-party group on British Muslims. Um, I know the work they've got up to. I know that they, without ever asking me, um, denounced me as me and me personally as a uh, you know the, the fascist far right blah blah blah. Um, so they've, they've it's it's basically that this group the, the people they they get to do their research for them have denounced me um, as a racist uh, without ever speaking to me. And they've been working on this definition of Islamophobia for a long time, 2018, and I I remember it. Um, Now, first of all, just look at the definition. Matter of factly, Islamophobia is rooted in racism. This is not a mistake not an accident they know what they're doing here they know that everyone runs screaming out of the room when the word racism is mentioned nobody wants to be accused of racism because in communist britain the people's republic of islamistan or britannistan or whatever the bloody hell we're called global we're global communist islamist mix at the minute um nobody wants to be called a racist because you're unpersoned and destroyed um so that's why they are trying to dress up Deliberately, because they're laughing at you're laughing at us. We're being laughed at here. Um, they know that white people are terrified of the word racism. So let's let's stick it to the whitey, um, even though we insist on living in their country, but whatever. Let's stick it to them and portray any criticism of our violent religion um, rooted in racism. 
Our politicians are so ridiculously weak. None of them are going to argue. None of them. Anyway, we go on. However, in 2021, the Conservative government rejected this definition, declaring it not fit for, for purpose. It pointed out this notion of Islamophobia conflates race and religion and has serious implications for free speech. Essentially, it equates criticism of Islamic doctrine and even radical Islamism with racism. I take issue with the author here. Um, Islamic doctrine and radical Islamism are the same thing. You, the Islam is the radical Islamism you refer to comes from Islamic doctrine. Read it, read it. This always, I'm here. I am again. This always, I, I can feel a blood vessel bursting somewhere when I, whenever I uh, have this this thought. Um, just pick it up and read it. You, we act as if there's no way of solving this mystery. How will we ever know for sure what Islam teaches? There's no way of knowing. Pick it up and read it. That's how you know. Anyway, it, while the, re the government rejected the term, other parts of the British state have not. As I show in Islamophobia Revisited, a new report for Civitas, one in seven local authorities in England has adopted the contested definition. One in seven councils, which actually are the bread and butter governors of this country, MPs really, MPs make the national decision. MPs, 650 of them are elected to represent a constituency, but ultimately they have very little to do with what the bread and butter every day goings on in their constituency. They are, a, they are the national parliament and they make national decisions. Locally, so um, planning, uh, construction, Try, you know, everything from your bins to the social welfare, to adoption agencies, to funding for various different charities. Your, your, your local world, the world you live in every day is run by local authorities. Yes, the laws are, the national laws are given to them by Parliament and Westminster and they have to run within those laws. They have to keep to those laws and the occasionally instruction will come from Westminster telling council here's a new rule and council will have to abide by it but ultimately everyday life is governed by local authorities um parliament is quite distant so with conservatives rejecting it local councils just accepted it anyway um, moreover, a panoply of other similarly pro problematic definitions of Islamophobia or anti-Muslim <coughs> anti hatred, sorry, <clears throat> coffee doesn't really do it, but it's all I've got. Um, moreover, a panoply of other similarly problematic definitions of Islamophobia or of anti-Muslim hatred have been adopted by several English councils. And after filing hundreds of freedom of information requests, I also discovered that 23% of Welsh councils, only 23 of Welsh councils and 25% of Scottish councils, again, I'm surprised it's so low, have adopted the APPG definition. One councillor described the effect this is having on free speech as a tide of little erosions to one of our most precious values. Of the 52 councils that have adopted the definition in England, 65% are Labour controlled. This is not a surprise. No, it's not. Labour has endorsed. Labour endorsed that definition, the one I've just read, the one that says rooted in racism. Labour has endorsed it and introduced a code of conduct on Islamophobia, which cites it. If Labour considers Islamophobia to be a type of racism, then it is likely that a Labour government will include the contested definition in official policy and could even incorporate it into the Race Equality Act that it says is core to its future plans. The very fact that the Race Equality Act is core to Labour's future plans tells you what we are looking at if and when they get into power. It is the stuff of 
nightmares. It really is. Prohibiting Islamophobia poses significant risks to free speech. Academic discussions about Islamic conquests by the sword uh, or contemporary debates about grooming gangs could be considered racist. Well, I like this guy. I don't know him, but I mean, I'm, I'm on his side. Hardeep Singh is his name. He's writing for Spiked Online. Um, it already is considered racist to talk about these things. The bizarre um, paradox of what I've done for years in saying that the grooming gangs, the Muslim grooming gangs, um, that they don't have Hindus or Sikhs in them, they don't have um, Thai or Japanese people in them. Um, they are not, therefore, it is not, therefore, an ethnic or a racial issue. It is an issue of religion. And this is further evidenced because, uh, for example, the rape gangs in Yorkshire tend to be Pakistani. Muslims, the rape gangs in Bristol are Somali Muslims, but they're both Muslims. Now, they couldn't be more different in every other respect. They're a different race, they come from a very different culture, um, from different continents, um, but they are both Muslims and yet they are both involved in grooming gangs. So common sense should tell us, but common sense, as we all know, is racist. Common sense should tell us that the issue here is one of religion. And if we look at that religion for so much as a few minutes, we will see uh, that it teaches that non-Muslims are a subhuman trash who deserve to be treated however the bloody hell Muslims deign to treat them. And this is double the case for non-Muslim uh, women who are lower than trash. Um, given that that's what that religion teaches, and given that the only unifying thing among the grooming gangs is their religion, you might think, you might think that it, the, the religion is somehow involved. Or religion, at least there's grounds to investigate the religion a little bit further, but no. If you suggest it's religion, you're a racist. If you call it a, 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 Pakistan, a, 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 a Asian problem, you're not a racist. So the actual race, racial slur, which is to call these filth Asians, that is a racial slur, that's not racist. Calling it a religious problem is racist. And we keep it up. I'm not even sure I'm keeping up at this point. But don't let this, don't let, don't let your, your, your um, thinking mind, your intelligence, your common sense. Don't let that get in the way. Just accept what you're told, that using a racial slur, not racist, not using a racial slur, racist. That's how it is. And if you don't accept that you're a racist, and if you're a racist, get out. No job, no future, no bank account, nothing. You're expelled, you're unpersoned from this communist Islamic paradise that we live in. He goes on to say, earlier this year, a Boston councillor was denied a mayoral role following accusations of Islamophobia. He published Facebook posts during the 2022 Qatar World Cup, raising legitimate concerns about the aspects of Islamic doctrine that restrict women's rights and criminalize homosexuality. They don't restrict women's rights. Women are nothing. Um, and as for criminalizing homosexuality, you're just that's a little bit polite. Wouldn't you say? I mean, hanging hanging gay men from from pole, from light po lamp posts and leaving them there to rot as a warning to others. It's little. It's just, let, let's let's tell the truth. Let's not say criminalize. Let's tell the truth. But it, I mean, how absolutely disgusting and absurd is this? They may as well rule the country. I've been saying for years. We basically live under Islamic rule. Um, and we do, because every time we set, we upset Islam, Islam wins. That's living under Islamic rule. I mean, we might not officially or formally live under it, 
But we may as well, because if ever you upset a Muslim, you're buggered. Islam always wins. Always. How many, what about the, where's the teacher in Batley? Is he still in hiding? Of course he is. How about that kid who accidentally scuffed a copy of the violent, oppressive, hateful scripture that is the Quran? Where, where, where? What, what, he, his, his mother was, did you see that? That kid's mother sitting down in front of beardy, um, beardy old farts, a string of beardy old farts, apologizing, head down, defeated, deflated. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I upset you. I'm looking, I'm just looking, it was preposterous. And guess who was sitting at the table next to beardy old farts? Mr. Weak, policeman, apologizing. Give me a break. Look, give me up for. Oh, I nearly did. I nearly did it. I nearly swore. A child scuffs the Quran. The police and his mother attend a meeting of a the community and the committee of Beardy Old Fat to apologize on bended knee. They weren't literally on bended knee, but they may as well have been. And give it a few years, they might literally be on bended knee. If that's not living under Islamic rule, de facto Islamic rule, then what is? It's always like that. Always. We're afraid of them. We're afraid of them. Pathetic. Spineless. Um, but this is serious as well. I mean, denied a mayoral role because he, I mean, it's, it's just too much. Honest to God, it's too much. I just clicked on that, actually. There was a link to that. Um, I've gone on to the Lincoln, a Lincoln, a Lincolnshire newspaper, and it says a Boston, Boston council was denied the role of mayor of Boston after accusation of hate speech again. Jesus, sorry, at Boston council, Blue Revolution councillor Mike Gilbert. Blue Revolution. I've never heard of that. I like that. I don't know what they do. So I, I just, just like the name. A Blue Revolution councillor Mike Gilbert lost the vote on Monday night's AGM after posts that he made during the Qatar World Cup where, oh, after posts that he made during the Qatar World Cup were bought up. He denied he was a racist. This is, this is, this is Mao's China, only with, with Islam thrown in. It's unbelievable. I remember going to a Hartlepool council meeting. We're going back a couple of years now. And there was a councillor, an elected councillor, sitting in a corner at a table by himself. Now, they were all sitting, all the councillors were sitting around in this um, sort of overly shaped table with them also. And he, this guy was sitting over in the corner on his own, on a table on his own. Do you know why? Because he'd shared a Facebook post that was considered racist. This is, this is, I mean, you, you want to talk about communist China? This is unbelievable. It was a joke. He made, he shared a joke on Facebook, which some bedwetters considered to be racist. And he was made to sit in the corner on his own. How much do we need? Seriously. How much do people need to understand what is happening? What we're living in. He denied he was a racist. Jeez, I, 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 but said he was raising questions about Islam's record of women's rights and gay rights. Newly elected Boston Independent Councillor Dale Broughton criticised the remarks, saying the comments expressed on social media do little to bring about social integration, which I believe is so badly needed to progress. Oh, really? His comments do little to bring about social integration. Uh huh. And um, what about the fact that? Islamic countries treat women as lower than cattle and execute blasphemers and apostates and homosexuals and a series of other people. Um, and then they come here and demand that we don't criticize that and riot in the streets. We've had a few of them, not just here, France riot in the streets if we don't do it we're told and yet raising concerns about the horrific treatment of human beings 
under this horrific re regime, uh, uh, several of them, that's what causes the social integration problem. So Muslims can be as utterly brutal as they want, commit the most grotesque crimes, both globally and right here in Britain. If you, as a kind-hearted, concerned person, raises these issues and says, I think it's appalling that these countries treat women the way they do. I think it's appalling the way they treat apostates or, or homosexuals. Or, I think that's appalling. You're the problem. Islam wins. Always. Grooming gangs were targeting white girls and Sikh girls, to be fair, for gang rape. People started to object. Who was threatening social cohesion? The rapists or the ones objecting to the rapists? How much of this do we need? Genuinely, how much of this do we need to see before we understand what is happening to us? I, 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 cannot, I cannot provide any more evidence. If I was arguing this in a court of law, I would it, it would be a, a slam it would be over. It would be over. The evidence is incontrovertible. It is unarguable. The evidence that we are living under a bullying, sustained tyranny. And it was brought here. Frankly, it was brought here from outside. And I'll tell you something else. I'm going to be really controversial now. You remember what Enoch Powell said about the whip hand? How much more do you need to know how right that was? Shocking. But not even remotely surprising. Uh, my research, I'll just go on with this article a little bit. I hope this chap, Hardeep Singh, doesn't mind me reading directly from it anyway. Uh, my research did indicate some. I am skipping bits, by the way, Antifa. So I'm 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 reading it as a discussion point, which I am permitted to do under copyright law. So you keep your little copyright spitefulness to yourself. Thank you. Uh, my research did indicate that some local pushback against the definition in Bradford Council, for example. Ooh, Bradford Council, for example, adopted its own definition after consultation with the Mo oh God, I was I, I I was optimistic there for a second. I should know better. After consultation with the local Muslim, Muslim community over concerns that the meaning of Muslimness was unclear. Oh dear. Well, I, I'm going. To, I can only guess then that Bradford Council's was even worse. <laughs> uh, other councils have refused to adopt it. Aberdeenshire in Scotland. Good for you, Aberdeenshire, voted against it, um, and Lancashire simply rejected it. The pushback owes much to the lobbying efforts of the National Secular Society. Oh, those were the days. Uh, its chief executive, Stephen Evans, who I remember very well, uh, has warned that this vague definition might be a counterproductive way of addressing anti Muslim bigotry and hatred. Oh, they were a little bit too PC sometimes. Anyway, um, so just to let you know that that it hasn't. None of this has gone away. We are still hurtling towards um, the utopia so desired by a that by um, friend of uh, so many so-called conservative patriots um andrew tate he's he's got a lot of friends among the uh patriotic political right um even though he's 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 uh salivating for a islamic state um he's re remarkable remarkable he's everywhere he's every social conservative's favorite pimp it's incredible absolutely incredible but there you go that's people for you sometimes that's Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. Right, let me come back to this. We've got five minutes, let me come back 
to some of these. Right. Um, Enoch was just repeating what one of his constituents said. That's fair, and that's not the first time I've heard that. However, uh, it's still true, and um, he said it. So, you know, good for him. Uh, hello, sweetheart. Hello, baby. My cat has come in the room. Oh, she's playing with the lights now. Hello, madam. Hello, madam. Little bugger. She was sick a while ago. We had to, she had to go to hospital, didn't you? Anyway. Um, our children had a crescent moon now added to the letterhead and bus sticker. I'm trying to find some questions. Let me see if I can find a question or two. Do I like Douglas Murray? Yes, I do. And yes, I know. I, well, I used to know him before I was shunned as a as a fascist. I used to hang out with all these people, you know, back in the days when I was allowed on telly. Um, what is the most common question of people have had? Um, I think people are... You know, people are largely concerned about being able to to make a living, and that's why I think um, this campaign is my campaign. So will, will be about keeping. You know, it, people. It's just that people all want the same thing. They want to be safe. They want their kids to be safe. They want to be able to earn a nice living. They want to live a comfortable life. Um, Pretty much, I do wonder though because we've had we've had a lot of migration into Hartlepool since I last stood um, for election. I, I wonder, I wonder whether, but again, because people are so defeated and so afraid, they probably won't bring it up, even though it's at the forefront of their minds. They probably won't mention it. Um, it says here that black immigrant won Miss Ireland, but that's okay. Well, it would have been racist if she hadn't. She has to. Has to. Uh, a video from a school in Limerick, Ireland, says that only blacks can get their hair braided as it's their culture and not Irish. So Irish not allowed to get them. Unbelievable. <laughs> Whenever me, me and my wife are talking about black, this she always says, "Why am I whispering?" Yeah, I mean, you you notice people whisper. It's the same if they talk about immigration or any of these things we're not allowed to talk about. Now that's again, that's you know, that's what people, that's what life was like in the Soviet Union. Um, I remember, I remember someone who lived in the Soviet Union who remembers very well that to discuss things, they would have to go into the back garden, turn on a radio, and, and sort of lean in just to to speak incredible okay okay i think i'm uh, gonna leave it there for this evening next week i'm going to talk about klaus schwab i want to know more about him let's have a little investigation into klaus schwab and see who this guy is and where he is at the moment. Um, someone has asked me about the scandal involving GB News. I, I don't know what's happened with GB News. I've got no idea. Um, I know something's happened because I before I start my live stream every week, I have a little whiz around social media. I know something's happened, but I don't keep up with these things for the most part. Um, okay. All right. Thanks very much, guys, as always. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you back here next week at half seven. Um, look after yourselves. And I mean that sincerely. Look after yourselves. Uh, and don't forget the to don't forget to to talk to tell your friends and, and, and if you're in on New Wales, Friday the 13th of October, do come along. Do come along if you can. AMW2024 at hotmail.com for details. Thank you very much, everyone. Look after yourselves. See you again next week.